Alrighty, welcome to another math video. We're looking at factorizing expressions here, which is actually really quite vague in terms of title. Um, what it means to factorize, well, let's have a look at it. So, as you might expect, um, factorizing has to do with factors, uh, and based on earlier math that you've done, you would have said, you know, what are the factors of 12? Uh, so, for 12, you for 12, you get the factors of, you know, uh, 1 and 12, you get 3 and 4, you get 2 and 6 are factors of 12. So what you can do, you could write 12 as being 1 times 12, or you could write 12 as being 3 times 4. Or you could also write 12 as being 2 times 6. So what you have here, you have 2 as a factor, you've got 6 as a factor as well. So 12, you can express 12 as a product of its factors. When we're talking about factorizing, generally all we're doing is expressing things, expressing expressions, technically, in terms of their factors. So um, we're going to try and find common factors, and then we're going to write them out as a multiplier. So let's grab a nice example to start off with. Um, it is worth noting that factorizing is the opposite of expanding. So if you do have expand, by the way, if you expand something like 3 outside of x plus 4, if you expanded that you would get um, 3x plus 12. So we're going to start with something like 3x plus 12 and go back to 3 outside of x plus 4. Okay. So factorizing, what we're doing, we're looking for a common factor. So what's in common between 3x and 12. Okay, we're going to ignore the plus minus signs for now. In 3x and 12, we can see, you can hopefully see they've both been divided by 3. So because they can both be divided by 3, I'm going to say this is equal to a 3 at the front, and then I'm going to put some brackets in. Okay, so now you should recall if there's something at the front of the brackets, it does mean multiply. So basically, in terms of my previous um, talk, if I go back up, we're looking to get the multiply in here. So the common factor here, the factor here is 3. And we're multiplying into some bracket. Okay. So 3 times what is 3x? So 3 times what is 3x? I'm going to put an x in here because 3 times x is 3x. And I've got a new term, so to start a new term I'm going to put a plus in. So my second term is 12, so 3 times what here is 12, what's well, 3 times 4 is 12. So if I expand 3x plus 4, th sorry, 3 outside of x plus 4, I should get 3x plus 12. Okay, so that first example, yes, kind of rigged because that's our explanation. Uh, and 3x plus 4, there are two factors. Yeah, we could write 3x as 3 times x, and 12 is 3 times 4, or 12 is being 2 times 6 or something, um, but we're looking to get the whole expression. So the whole expression here is something multiplied by something else, not just term by term. The whole expression is 3 multiplied by x plus 4. Anyway, enough chat, let's just do some examples. So pulling some examples, let's go through and factorize something like um, 8x plus 4. So we're looking for here a number that can be, or something that can divide both 8x and 4. So both 8x and 4 can be divided by 2, um, but even better than that, I can divide them by 4. So I'm going to say this is equal to 4, and I'm going to throw my bracket in. I want to get the biggest number here that I can. So yes, 2 would work, uh, 1 would work as well, technically, um, but 4 is the biggest number that divides both of them, so 4 is going out the front. Then I ask myself for this first part here, 4 times what is 8x? So basically expanding but backwards. So 8x and 4, I need 2x. Okay, because 4 times 2x is 8x. You could also consider it as being 8x divided by 4. That would work as well. So 4 times 2x is 8x. That's our first part. Then 4 times 1 uh, will get us our second term there. So that's that question done already. If I go something like 15 minus 3x, 
In this case here, you can see 15 and 3x can be divided by 3. So 3 goes out the front. Um, 3 times what is 15? Well, 3 times 5 is 15. And 3 times what is negative 3x? It's going to be a negative. Positive times negative is negative. 3 is already there, so it's 5 minus x. Got another example. C, if I had minus... 18 minus 27x. Here, 18 and 27 can both be divided by 9. And because they're both negative, I will pull the negative out the front. Okay. If, it's, if there's only one negative, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if they're both negative, the negative should be out the front. So 9 times what is 18? It's going to be 2. So negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. Then negative 9 times what is minus 27? That's going to be plus 3x. Okay, so that is that example there done. This is really basic, guys. Um, at the year 10 level, you really should be on top of this. Um, so if you need to have a look at some worksheets, go and do a bunch of examples for yourself. Um, in short, you're looking for what can divide both of them. So 18, oops, sorry. 18 and 27 here can both be divided by 9. 15 and 3 here can both be divided by 3. If I take one more example, just to throw a bit of algebra in there as well. If I had 16xy squared plus, let's say, 8x squared y. Looking at this, I can divide, divide both 16 and 8 by 8. So 8's out the front. But I can also put some algebra out the front as well because... I can divide this here and this here by 1x and avoid a fraction, so I'll put 1x out the front. And I can also divide them both by 1y, or y to the 1. Okay, so 8xy is out the front. Then to, from 8xy to get to 16xy squared, I need 2y's. Again, multiply that out, should check out. 8xy multiplied by x will get me 8x squared y for my second term. Gents, this is basic. Do a lot of examples. That's my advice for you. Um, we're not going to spend much time on this because, as, as I said, take it for granted. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and best of luck with your examples. Cheers.